If you like uh, EDC or everyday carry and you like to talk about it and see what other guys have and uh, where they carry it and how they carry it, then uh, stick around and I'm going to show you what my current as of fall 2018 EDC setup looks like. First up, uh, let's go over what EDC is. Uh, EDC is, stands for Everyday Carry, if you didn't already know that. Uh, most of us probably do, because uh, we wouldn't click on this video if we didn't know what it meant. But anyway, um, we all carry different stuff. Uh, we all have different choices in flashlights and knives and guns and all that stuff. And uh, I always like to see uh, kind of what other people carry, how they carry it, what works for them. But uh, I made a video last year in 2017 uh, it hadn't made one since, and a few things have changed, uh, not a lot, uh, just a few minor things. Um, kind of once you get your setup done, uh, you don't really change it a whole lot. Usually, uh, it takes a while to get to that point, but once you get there, you usually just kind of fine-tune or tweak a little, uh, some things. All right, so to start off with, uh, whenever I leave the house, I have a, a kind of a saying in my mind where I check all my pockets, make sure I have everything, and... It goes uh, knife, phone, keys, and wallet, in some sort of that order. Um, and then I go gun, magazine, whatever. Because uh, not every time I can carry my gun, you know, where I work at, I can't have it uh, on me. I can have it in my vehicle and all that stuff. So I always make sure I have knife, phone, keys, and wallet, because those are in my immediate pockets. And then I check, uh, make sure I have my gun either in my pants, on my belt, or in my bag, whatever I'm taking with me to work or wherever I'm going. All right, so the first thing is knife. This is a uh, the same Spyderco paramilitary two that I had last time. It's got black handle and the silver blade. Uh, it does have a new clip on it. This is a titanium clip um, I got off maybe eBay or Amazon. I don't even know if they still make them or sell them. But it's basically a, a, just a deep pocket clip. The original clip uh, came to about right here. And whenever it sat in my pocket, it just stuck out just a little bit. And which is not a big deal with blue jeans that have like flat cut pockets. But if you have like a, uh, like dress pants have slant cut pockets, it sticks out even more because it puts it at a kind of a weird angle. And it was like bright silver. I like the blade. I didn't really like that. I thought it stood out a little too much. Um... So I got the kind of subdued titanium kind of, it's kind of a matte color, flat. It doesn't, it's not as flashy, it doesn't stick out as far, so. Uh, this knife has been uh, pretty awesome. It's got good uh, jimping on the back for your thumb. Uh, like I said, pocket clip, I've already gone over that. Uh, the handles are uh, G10, I think. They're not super grippy, but uh, you know they're not slick either, they're, they're pretty good. It fits in my hand really nice. The cutouts for all the fingers and all that fits good. And the blade profile I like. It's got a good tip on it. It's a full grind. Uh, that means it doesn't have any. It doesn't have a flat edge on the side, which means it's good for slicing because it's always um, you know opening. It doesn't have a, a flat spot to get stuck when the blade comes through. Um, and it's made out of S30V. CPM S30V crucible particle materials or metal whatever uh, anyway S30V is good because it's got pretty good corrosion resistance and it will get pretty sharp and it will stay sharp for a pretty good while so overall this is a uh, really good knife all right the next thing uh, keys I keep it I keep my keychain on a uh, I think it's like what cops use on their duty belts it's like a little spring loaded clip uh, I got one that fits like an inch and a half or inch and three quarter belt and the ring right here just kind of snaps in the side of it. I do have a KeySmart. Yeah, it's a KeySmart. It's kind of like a, um, a, a key bar, but it's a lot cheaper. I think this is maybe 20 or 30 bucks. This one is metal. I'm not sure if it's titanium or aluminum, but it's kind of a silver color, gray, whatever. Uh, it keeps all my keys, my work keys, my house keys and all that stuff. Then I've got a Night Eyes. I think it's called a Doohickey, actually. It's just got a, a flat head, a little bottle opener, and you can actually turn uh, some 
some nuts or some bolts with these. It's got a few different sizes on there. It's got a little bitty uh, measuring. It's like five centimeters, maybe two inches, something like that. That stays on there. And then I got my truck key and my key fob for work. So that's my keys. I uh, hang them on the belt because I don't like them in the pocket because I've already got you know, a wallet, a knife, a phone, and all that other stuff in my pocket. So I hang it off my belt on a flashlight. Um, so I hang it off my belt just to save room in my pants because I guess I've got big legs and you know, I don't like all that extra bulk in my pants because they're already you know, tight fitting anyway. Even if I get relaxed fit, they're still not very relaxed to me. So I like to put a little bit of stuff on the belt if I can just to get them out of the pockets. All right, the next thing, uh, my phone key, wallet. It's the same uh, Magpul DACA, whatever style wallet. It doesn't have the window. Uh, it's just got a few pockets on it. But I can keep my uh, credit card, debit card, driver's license, gun permit, and all that stuff in here. And it's really thin, and it's kind of compact. I don't really keep cash on me much, so uh, don't really have a need for a cash wallet, you know, one like a bifold or trifold wallet. If I do have cash, I usually put it in my front pocket, but there's my wallet. Uh, my phone key, uh, flashlight. Uh, this is a new flashlight for, I guess, 2018, for me anyway. It's a Phoenix PD32. The reason I went with the Phoenix over the Streamlight uh, Protac 2LX is because the Protac cannot accept a Theorem switchback and the Phoenix can. I wanted to try out the switchback, see what it was all about. This one, the way the tail cap's set up, you can't do that. This one you can, and you're probably thinking, why isn't the switchback on there? Well, I put it on there, and I just like the bungee cord better. Uh, the switchback, the loop on it was really big. Uh, it's probably made for gloves, so you can stick your finger in there if you have a glove on. But I kind of found that it was just too, uh, too loose. And it kind of wanted to fall off my finger when I was uh, moving it around and stuff. So I just like to stick with a simple bungee. This came out of a jacket. The bungee cord did. It came out of the bottom uh, hem of a jacket. I cut it out. Now I've got enough bungee cord for all my flashlights. And last year, the light that I had was a Protac uh, 1, 1L, 1AA, I think, or something like that. It was a little bit smaller than this one. It could take the... Uh, a CR123 or a AA battery. That flashlight I liked a lot, but uh, when my daughter was born and I was in the hospital, uh, you know, with my wife and all that, uh, I lost it in the labor and delivery room. I don't know if it slid out of my pocket when I, because I slept in a recliner that night, so I don't know if it like slid out, fell in the chair, and it was a crazy time, you know with the baby being born and she went to the NICU and all that stuff. So we were rushing around and, and you know, it's just something that got overlooked, I guess. I lost it. So then I got the Protac 2LX. I thought it was just a little bit bigger and it had 500 lumens as opposed to the, I think, 350 of the other light. Uh, and, the, you know, some of the reasons, like I said, why I got the Phoenix over this one was because of the switchback capability. And then I realized also that the, the pocket clip on the Protac 2LX sits all the way to the top right here, which is good uh, for some people because it buries the flashlight in the pocket really well. But for me, it just seemed like it added the entire length of the flashlight in the pocket. And, you know, when it's in my back pocket, it's on my hip. And, you know, when you sit, your hip curves, you know, like your butt cheek. It curves and when you put a long flat object on a curved object like a straight line on a tangent I guess the edges seem to stick out a lot so if you can see where that clip is compared to that one uh, yeah you've got this much sticking out but you've only got this much in the pocket which depending on where you carry it if it's in the front pocket it's probably not that big a deal but like I said I carry it on my back and it curves around my hip when I sit down so I just like to have a little bit less sticking out of the pocket or I like to have a little bit less in the pocket that wants to stick out. So that's why I went with the Phoenix um, PD32, which is, it, so far it's been a great light. Um, it's got momentary on or constant on. 
It has five different modes for like five lumens all the way up to 900, I think. A little button on the side. I pretty much just keep it. <coughs> I pretty much just keep it on uh, full max 900 because if I need to pull it out and you know look for something or shine somebody in the face, I want 900 lumens. And it's not it's not one of those where you can just tap through the back. You have to push the button on the side. Um, I guess I can grab it with my pinky, but it's just one more thing I don't want to have to worry about. So I just grab it out, loop it around my fingers, and I can turn it on. I got 900 lumens. And then if I really want to bump the lumens down to look for something, I can always do that and set it back to 900 um, before I put it back in my pocket. All right, my phone is uh, just the latest version of iPhone. I think it's an XS or X, something like that. Um, I mean, I don't really have a choice in it. This is what we use for work. We use iPhones, so um, it's got an Incipio case on it. I might take it off because it adds a little bit of thickness to it and a little bit of weight. And I've seen that the uh, the new iPhones are pretty sturdy, pretty uh, pretty strong as far as drop testing goes. So I don't know if I'll keep it on there. I'm usually not too harsh on phones. They stay in my pocket. You know, they don't ride on my belt. I'm not usually dropping them off ladders and stuff like that, but. Uh, the case has been working pretty good. The phone's been working pretty good. You know, it's just an iPhone. All right, next thing. Uh, I guess we can go over the gun. It's the same gun. It's in a little bit different holster. Uh, it's still the Glock 26. Uh, I usually carry it with a 12-round mag in it. Uh, I used to sometimes carry it with the Magpul 12-round, but then I saw where a lot of people were... Um, not really fully trusting the Magpul mags. I never really had a problem with them, but enough people uh, that I know and respect did. So I keep the Magpul mags for training only, and this is a factory Glock mag. Uh, it has a Pierce Plus 2 extension. It has the little finger grooves that go with it uh, to match the texture on the grip. Sorry, I'm a little sick. Uh, it does have 147 grain um, what are they called? Not gold dots. Uh, HST, Federal HST. Um, I've seen videos of tests and they, they seem to do really well out of the shorter barrel pistols like this. A uh, little extra weight on them. And these uh, expand really well uh, at lower velocities and high velocities. So that's why I went with the HSTs. Uh, the gun itself is loaded uh, there's one in the chamber uh, I haven't done anything extra to it it still has the factory springs in it factory trigger factory connector all that stuff just for the record there's nobody behind the camera it's the corner of a room and there's nobody beyond that so if I point at the camera don't freak out about it uh, at least it's not pointing at me or you know my leg or something like that Anyway, the only thing I've done to it is get rid of the, the, you could call them sights if you want to. I think they're really just like dovetail protectors for the slide because most everybody that knows anything about manipulating a gun single-handed or injured or even just happen to have rugged sights knows that the Glock sights are crap. They're plastic. I mean, they, they work for shooting with, you know, for uh, four sights. They're not bad as far as shooting goes, but just being plastic, I mean, if you rack it like a couple times off the edge of a table or a belt, they're pretty, yeah, that back one especially is probably just going to rip out. I've seen it happen too many times. Um, so these are um, Spartan, Ameriglow Spartan sights. Uh, I think that's what they're called. The back is uh, is not serrated, it's blacked out. It does have two tritium uh, dots on the back that you can see at night, but you can't see them during the daytime, so it's pretty much a blacked out rear sight. The front sight looks identical to a um, Trijicon HD with the big orange ball, uh, like fluorescent orange paint with tritium on the inside. <coughs> the only difference is these are a lot shorter as far as uh, how far they stick off the side, the slide, they're a lot shorter than the Trijicon HDs, and they're not as sharp on the back. 
Uh, if you've ever carried a pistol with HDs on it in appendix, you know that they that sight digs in and it gets uncomfortable. So these are a little bit closer uh, to the slide. They're a little bit more rounded in the back. They're not quite as sharp. And I can pick up targets easily with them and they seem to work out pretty good for me. The gun itself, uh, like I said, doesn't have any major modifications. I did do a little bit of an undercut right here with the Dremel tool. It's nothing severe. You can see that it's just a little bit to uh, help with having that red knuckle whenever you shoot a Glock for a long time for an extended amount of rounds. You'll know that the side of your finger right there gets really red because of the thick square trigger guard. Alright, the holster that I carry it in, hold on just one second, let's move this a little farther away. Okay, the holster is a little different. The one I had in the last EDC video was one that I had made. It still works great. Um, it's still comfortable, it sits perfect, it's just how I like it. But I want to try something else out, uh, mainly because that holster is kind of ugly. And I was kind of embarrassed to show it, you know, show it on video, show it to people just because aesthetically it's not very pleasing. Uh, functionally, it's awesome. But I just wanted to have something that I could uh, be a little more proud of, you know, to show off. But anyway, this is a, uh, started as a DIY holster um, vacuum mold shell, vacuum form shell. When you buy it, it's flat. Um, and it's uh, pre-molded to whatever gun you pick. It has the slide, the uh, ejection port is blocked off really nice. I mean, I'm sure they used a, um, like a CNC cut blank to make this. So they blocked out for the ejection port, the uh, slide, lock, slide release. It's got enough room if you have an extended one or a different one. Uh, it's got good retention on the trigger guard it's formed really nice around there it's clean and crisp uh, this one's adjustable retention when you buy the holster shell it comes flat like i said all you have to do is heat up the sight channel and it will fold around the sight channel so you stick a uh, an empty gun or a, a blank or a sim gun whatever in here fold it around it and then pinch it real tight uh, until the sight channel cools off then you put a couple of rivets right here and the holster is pretty much done but this one uh like i said being adjustable retention it has these little rubber spacers in between here so you can squeeze the uh, holster with the screws however tight you want it to be however positive you want the click to be um, this one has a wing i think it came from diy holster it's either from there like index fastener or something like that it's just one of the basic um, claws or wings that you can buy go on here it's got the short uh <coughs> this one's got uh two different height i guess claws on it that uh the belt pushes um it pushes the back end of the gun closer to the body this one's got a short one on there because this is a short shorter gun and i don't need that much pulling back just a little bit uh, it's got two soft loops on it uh used to have like a one uh, hard clip which works great if you wear a stiff belt but um, and I'm going to catch a lot of flack from this from the tactical guys but I found that wearing a little bit softer belt uh, only on appendix if you wear a little softer belt it lets the gun kind of sit where where it wants to and where your body wants it to and it, it's a little more comfortable you get a little more flexibility out of it when you move uh, with a stiff belt it seems the holster sits where the belt wants it to, not where your body wants it to. So, you know, when the stiff belt is on there, it might not be as flat as it could against your body because the belt is, you know, forcing it to go a certain direction. <coughs> uh, especially as far as this goes, this way, like this is your body. Uh, the shorter guns usually tend to kick out on the handle because there's not enough barrel to, to lever against it and on a stiff belt you know it rides a little higher and it just wants to stick out like that a lot and on a softer belt you know the belt's a little more flexible so it can kind of I can kind of push it down just a little bit and the holster will sit straight 
And then when I sit down, you know, I can just kind of adjust a little bit. Push my belly behind the gun and then kind of sit, you know, behind the gun almost. And then when I stand up, just give it a little tap and it falls right back down where it should be. So that's why I wear a little bit softer belt, um, only for appendix. If I carry on my hip or outside or anything like that, uh, stiff belt all day long. Because you actually use because that the uh, the clips are what hold the holster to the body, so you want it to draw tight, and you don't want it to flex out like that. On appendix, it's inside, and you want it to push, pull against your body, and sit where it wants to. Uh, another thing on this holster, I have some Velcro on the back, and I have a little piece of foam to act like a wedge, um, just to help push the front away, which pushes the top of the gun back to me. And when you have a little bit of a belly, especially it pushes the top of the gun out, and then your shirt, you have the, the rear sight sticking through the shirt, and you can see a hard corner right there, and it uh, just looks kind of obvious. So the wedge helps push the back end of the gun toward the body. And another thing that helps with that uh, for Glock 26 is put it in a Glock 19 holster. That's what this is. It has a little bit extra length right here on the bottom to help uh, push the top of the push the top of the gun back to the body and I think I got a little bit off topic when I was talking about belt loops I went straight to the uh, softer belt and I never came back to the soft loops I wear the softer belt appendix and with the hard clip um, it wasn't as effective on that belt because it's thinner it's not as thick as like a stiff scuba webbing belt so that's why I put the soft loops on there just to make sure that the holster doesn't pop off the belt because it's thinner and the clips don't grab as good. I put two of them on here to spread out the uh, the leverage on the holster. That way it doesn't tip as much. I'm talking about going, I'm not going this way. The holster doesn't want to tip as much. You still get a little bit of wiggle uh, because there's a little bit of slack in the loops and the, the belt, you know, whatever. So you get a little bit of flexibility when you're sitting, standing, moving, but it's not as much because usually if I had one clip on here it would fall like level with my belt and then I couldn't get my fingers in here and all that stuff so two two belt loops helps with that and the wedge actually helps with that because not only does it pull the gun back it pushes the belt away right here where your fingers need to go so it almost like opens up the belt so you can slide your fingers in and get a full grip on the pistol all right uh, that's the gun and the holster the spare mag is still riding in the same uh, mag carrier from last time. It's one that I made. It's uh, not definitely not the most attractive. I'm not even really proud to show it off, but it works. It's the most comfortable, uh, best fitting holster, uh, mag holster that I've tried. <coughs> uh, it just sits right where I want it. It sits right in the crease of, I guess, the hip and the leg. You know, when you sit your groin kind of curves in like that and that's where the mag sits at an angle which helps with concealability and comfort it also helps for grabbing it because it's at an angle and your arm is pretty much pointed straight in line with the mag so you can just grab it and pull it out um, like I said it's got a soft loop on it too uh, for the same reason the holster does it's just got one it usually doesn't ride around too much like I said because it's in the crease of that hip uh, this is a 17 round Glock mag, factory mag. It's got a plus two extension on it. So I've got 19 rounds here, 13 rounds in the gun. That's what, 31 rounds. Uh, you know, we're not going to get into how many rounds do you need to bait, uh, but for me, that seems sufficient. It's a good balance between how many I want to carry and how many I can carry or will carry. So. These, when they're in the pants, they ride just like this. They're separate so they can move around a little bit. And this is just a little bit smaller package if I had to put it in a bag or anything like that. I did have them connected at one point. Uh, but I just didn't really like it because it didn't allow the holsters to move or fit where they needed to. But anyway, this is how they sit in the belt uh, right beside each other. Another thing, with, when they're connected, different pants have different belt loops and they're spaced differently. 
and sometimes the clips might not line up with the belt loops and this way if a belt loops in the way I can slide the mag a little bit to to clear it in either direction so that's another good thing about having uh, separate holsters some people like them connected you know to each their own I'm not gonna tell you what you have to do that's just what I do all right so that's uh, all the pocket stuff the the gun the mag another important thing that I carry is a uh, med kit especially when I have pants on um, this is like a, a more robust or more filled med kit this goes on my ankle this is from uh, rescue essentials ankle medical kit uh, it's got velcro it's got a little bit of suede in the inside that goes against your leg uh, it's got a big pocket right here um, with a flap on it and then two elastic pockets it's actually got three slots of molly right here on the back uh, I don't really use that I don't know what you'd use it for maybe you could slide a pin in there or you know put like a tourniquet pouch on it or something but for me right now these three pockets uh, are sufficient in this big pocket right here I have uh, some what is this it's like frog tape I think yeah frog tape from focus group uh, it's like two or three pieces the frog tape is good just for sticking uh, sticking things down uh, if you have to put like a chest seal <coughs> you don't have a chest seal you can use like a piece of plastic stick over there and use the frog tape to seal it up secure it that's just good to have a little bit of tape in there I've also got some uh, nitrile or latex gloves behind that um, it's good to not have other people's blood on your hands because of you know diseases and all that stuff uh, and it's sitting on the back of or pushed up against a z-pack dressing uh, this is one it's four yards four and a half inch wide by four yards uh, and the the z-pack or z fold or z-pack whatever is good because it's already folded to where you can go back and forth stuffing the gauze in the wound um, if it's a roll, you know, you can always, you know, it's a controversial move, but you can throw the roll over your back and it'll unroll. And that way you can stuff in. If you're not as good at holding the roll, say, say this is a roll of gauze, you can hold it in your hand and fold it out and unroll it. But if you're not as good or not trained with that technique, it can be kind of tricky and you can be kind of slow at it. So what you can do is throw the roll over your back and then you have a straight line and you can just start packing and feeding it in there uh, uh, one pack uh, you know, if you ever pack wounds or talk to anybody that has you'll figure out that one gauze is probably not going to work depending on how big the wound is but you know I can't carry six or seven packs of gauze or, or wound packing material on my leg so one it is and it sits like this all the small stuff fits in behind it and the little flap keeps it secure all right the next thing um, in the med kit is a tourniquet this is a soft tee wide um, I know the cats are really good I use the cat tourniquets on my um, my plate carrier or my belt and all that stuff because they're a little bulkier and it doesn't matter on a plate carrier you're not trying to keep it slim or any of that and the reason they're bulkier um, I just had a conversation with a, a buddy of mine that's a police officer and we we're talking about tourniquets and the reason they're bulkier is because the cat oh I got one right here all right on the cat tourniquet <coughs> you can see the uh, the windlass retainer um, it's a plastic loop with an opening in it so the windlass can drop in and you velcro over the top which is good because it's always open it's always there but it's also bad for keeping it slim because it's always open it doesn't go flat and it sticks out the sides a little bit sticks out the front just makes the the tourniquet you know bigger as a folded package compared to a soft tee wide which the windlass retainer on this one is a little triangle uh, 
kind of little triangle buckle, I guess. It, it folds either way. And so when you fold it up, it folds flat against the tourniquet. And then when you need it, you can just pick it up, stick the windlass in there, and it'll pull tight and hold it. Either way, they're good tourniquets. Uh, they're both about the same width as far as the strap. You know, the wider the strap, the better, more occlusion you get on the blood flow. You know, the little thin ones, like the rat, rat tourniquet or whatever it's called, the little bungee cord with the hook. I've never used one or seen one, but I've heard some people say they don't like them because they're so thin and they don't occlude good enough. So anyway, that's why I go with the cat tourniquet on that stuff and the soft T wide when I'm trying to keep it slim. Uh, the next pocket has a TK4 or T4, what's it called? Yeah, TK4, um, I guess you could call it a tourniquet or just a, a uh, pressure, pressure bandage. Uh, I put that in the other pocket because in my mind it can be used as you know, a pressure bandage to, to hold uh, pressure on the the gauze that you pack in there or just something like that to wrap around uh, the wound or it could be used as an extra tourniquet if you really had to, if you needed two of them, if you, know, if you were hurt or somebody else was hurt and you needed two tourniquets. This one would be my go-to because it's a superior tourniquet and the TK4 you could still use uh, I reckon you could get it tight enough to occlude the blood flow, um, but it's just hard to use with one hand because you have to like hook it and then wrap it and then you know hold that down while you're wrapping it and then hook the other thing. It's just harder to use with one hand, you know, if your hand or arm gets injured and you have to go one hand. Soft tee or a cat, you can just pull it out and if you stage it right, you can flick it and it'll fall open or you know you can open it with one hand, slip it over the, the arm or the leg with one hand, pull it tight, twist it, lock it and all that stuff with one hand and a TK4. You could probably do that, but you have to take the hook and loop it around the fabric and pull back against it. And you know, it's just kind of hard to do with one hand. So that's why it's not my primary tourniquet. All right, so that's uh, pretty much the whole, the whole deal right here on the table. Uh, flashlight, knife, Phone, wallet, keys, gun, spare mag, uh, med kit. I'm sure there's a couple other things that uh, some of you might carry. Uh, some extra things or something different. Um, you know, if you like what this is or you want to know more about it, you know, just give me a comment or something. Uh, or if you think some of this stuff absolutely sucks and you've got a better idea, leave me a comment on that also. Uh, I'll be glad to hear it. I look at all of them. I like to hear or see what you guys have to say. You know, just to get some different opinions and bounce them around and stuff like that. So for fall 2018, uh, this is this is my setup. Um, when it gets a little colder, I might go to a bigger gun like a Glock 17 with a uh, with a weapon mounted light on it because I can put like a like an overshirt or a jacket or a hoodie or something like that. I can put it on and it hides the gun a little better. And uh, you know, it's a little bit darker. It stays darker longer in the winter time, so. I don't know, the flashlight on the gun gives me a little more peace of mind. It's probably, you know, kind of dumb or not factual, but that's how I like to do it, and it makes me feel better. So, you know, if you think that's stupid or something, get your own YouTube channel and make your own video. But uh, anyway, I do like uh, when wintertime comes around, not, uh, because I, not just because I can carry a bigger gun, but even the smaller gun, it just makes it a little bit easier to hide or conceal. I don't have to worry about it as much. I can, you know, I can relax. I can push my gut out if I have to. I don't have to feel like I'm trying to suck in all the time. Which, if you do that with a Penix carry and you have to suck in, you know it kind of gets sore on your back after a while. Just having to keep, I guess, good posture like we're supposed to. But uh, anyway, if you have like a hoodie or overshirt, you can kind of relax a little bit and slouch a little more and not have to constantly worry about it is it sticking out or how far is it sticking out or you know do I need to suck in a little more anything like that so each piece is kind of equally important to me um, which is why they're here in the the rotation or the kit system whatever you want to call it everything has its role and its job and everything to me is important 
you know, just like a knife. If I can't carry my gun, uh, you know, I can do work with a knife. I can do, I can cut things, cut boxes, cut people if I have to. The flashlight, you know, it's dark more than half of the, the time of the day. It's dark or dim. You need to search for things or if you have to pull the gun out and it's dark, you want to have the light out before the gun because you want to be able to identify that, hey, that's something that the gun needs to come out for. <coughs> you don't want to pull the gun you're like, oh, that's a bad guy. Let me pull my gun. Oh, wait, let me get my light and see if it's a bad guy. No, it's just my mom, my girlfriend, my daughter, whatever. The light should come out before the gun. You got to be able to see the threat before you pull the gun out. You can't ID a threat unless you can see it. So the light needs to come out before the gun. So that's why lights are important to me. Just as important as guns and medical and all that stuff. Just like any other video, uh, go ahead and hit all the little buttons to subscribe, watch another video, click the bell, like it, share it, tell all your friends about it, watch it more than one time, comment on it, that's always good. Uh, do all that little stuff that helps the video out because uh, you know, that's what I'm here for, to get exposure, to get my videos out, get people to watch them. So thanks for watching.